Yeah, we're streaming. Say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah, Dylan, it's a little dark. It's a little dark in here. Not much we can do. You can see once the bowlers get past the, the ball return, yeah. you can see them. <laughs> I, I wonder if they would cut the concourse lights on for us. Well, it looks like they have them, but they're, they're red. <laughs> yeah, they don't need the... <laughs> Yeah, because those are probably black lights there. Or the orange ones. I'll talk to Anthony, see if he can bring us some. Uh, if he got any lights he can bring tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It might yeah. make it a little easier, too. Dylan, uh, Jason Thomas, and Ray Gillespie are uh, are on right now. I don't know if, if, if Paul's going to make it over. Yeah, so uh, Paul Rodriguez is scheduled to join us. Um, he is held up in traffic. Okay. Well, if Paul makes it, I'll I'll uh, gladly give him my headset. Okay. And he can call the match with you. But okay. until he gets here, I'll I'll uh, keep you company. All right. Cool. Appreciate it. So, so the cool. The, yeah. Uh, go ahead. So the cool part we're we're doing today is this is the final four teams that are left for the the inaugural Vixens capped uh, tag team series. Uh, we started this project back in January with 16 teams. Uh, they made then we did a cut to the final eight. Then uh, here we are, our final four, and the winners of these two matches today, uh, they join the rest of the North-South matches tomorrow uh, to crown the inaugural Vixens uh, capped tag team champion. And you got the belts sitting out there? Yep, I got the belts on there. It'd be, it'd be nice to have a little more light on them to, to, uh, to show, but the uh, it's uh, really nice. It's uh, black leather, uh, silver with, uh, pur with purple trim. And so it's really cool. We went. We just got new belts uh, for the the south, and so with these ones, we we, we went with the color purple. We just we try to be very specific on each uh, each series, so it's okay. quick to see it. Uh, like cruiserweights, orange, welterweights, green. You know, each series is different. The the really cool belt that we got is the world belt. It's gold plates, but it's also like a gold snake skin. Oh, nice. too. It's nice. really, really nice. Uh, and that tomorrow will be uh, Jerry Didway defending against the Southeast champ, uh, Charles Withers. So we're looking forward to, to that match. And But we've really been excited. Today is all about the uh, about these Vixens. Uh, these ladies have been working really hard. They've really wanted to do uh, their own tag team series. And we're, we're turned down for a while. And just, you know, they kind of convinced everybody and... You know, so we, we went with it, you know, between uh, Casey Parnell, uh, Daphne Smith, you know, we're real big and uh, getting with me at a tour stop and we started putting this idea together. And uh, so, you know, I, I can't take the credit for it. It's, it's the two of them did a really good job of kind of laying out some stuff. And then we shared on social media, got some feedback on what our cap um, total should be. We went with 410. So the two ladies you see have to be 410 or under. Uh, combined so it's it's really cool like we're really we're really proud of this and really got a lot of excitement going uh in, in the uba for it nice now uh who are some of the players that we've got competing here tonight all right so we got uh so what we're gonna have here on lanes three and four we have the high point hot shots and going against the spartanburg savages uh the high point hot shots have uh, heather coble and april stone uh High Point is uh, located in, in North Carolina, uh, around the Greensboro area. Uh, the really cool part with these two girls was, so when we did the qualifying, we did three regular games, so they could the girls had the option of getting inside action and things like that. And then we did four tag team style games, and the, their qualifying for the three games was the lowest of all 16 teams. Okay. But when it got to the tag team action, they made up all that ground and then some. Because they had the highest uh, four tag team scores. Okay. So it's, it's kind of a team that you don't see a lot about, you know, in the UBA. Uh, they don't have a lot of a lot of representation and stuff yet, but uh, fairly new team still. And so these two, we're really looking forward to how they're going to do uh, today and moving forward. And what's the format for uh, for the match? So the format for the match is they're going to bowl. It's best of seven. And the first person that bowls has to bowl the first three games, uh, the first three frames. Okay. 
and then they get the option to tag their partner in. So there's a lot of strategy involved. It's kind of like playing chess. You've got to figure out who's bowling the best on the left lane, who's bowling the best on the right lane, and, and make, your, make your tags during that. And we'll talk more about that as it, as it gets going. Because they have to have four tags. So whoever starts game one has to be the one that finishes. They have okay. to throw the last ball in the tent. But it's getting there where it, got, it can be a little little iffy. Sometimes you'll see the, the little sidebar conversations. You know, hey, do you want to shoot at this spare? Do you want to come in now? La da 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 da. So it's it, it's really interesting, and it just it adds to it where it's not just a doubles match. You know, I see. It, it's more of you know it's one person bowling at a time, but the strategy and when do I come out? When do you come in? And following those those uh, that criteria. Has, has been something we were kind of worried about, but the girls, they've been done phenomenal. Uh, the month of February was the first time they actually had head-to-head -head matches to get to this level, and they, they all did great. You know, three of the four matches went to Game 7, and that's always exciting. You know, we, we love Game 7s in sports. Uh, bowling is, is no different. It just puts a lot of extra in energy and the, and the emphasis on executing. You know, it becomes more and more uh, apparent in... Game seven is just—I can't say no about game seven. They just get me excited just talking. Yeah, about yeah, them, so. yeah. It's it's winner take all. Yeah, it's winner take all. Um, so the the savages—they've got um, Daphne Smith and normally Peyton Foy is her partner. Well, Peyton um, already had a, a trip pre-planned, so Daphne is using her sub um, that they get one per season. Um, in in Megan Brunk here, that this is her first time in this environment. You know, uh, she's a lower average bowler, lower than everybody else in the field. So Daphne's going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting, which Daphne's used to doing that. Daphne yeah. is our Vixens champ uh, as well, our singles champ. So, you know, it, it's going to be something to watch with them because everybody else has tag team experience uh, except for Megan. So we'll see how that plays out in that match. So that that's going to be really cool. Um, the lane, lanes five and six. Uh, we got uh, Carolina Swag, which they were our highest qualifier that were left. Um, they were actually our two seed to start. And uh, so you got uh, Sheena, Sheena Jones and Roxy Carmichael that uh, are, are both very confident, very uh, expecting to win, in, but in the most respectful way that you, you can possibly have. You know, it is the UBA, so there is the, there's trash talk and things like that going on. <laughs> But they are, they are uh, all looking forward to it. and uh, So they, they should put up some, some pretty big scores uh, themselves. And then they're bowling against um, Adrian and uh, Marlena. And the, the, the thing with them, that so Carolina Rollers, they only got in. They were the eighth team to get in. They got in by 25 pins. And they were the only match in the, in the final eight that didn't go game seven. I think they lost game one and then went back four. Okay. You know? So they ran them down and just – so it's something really cool to see that in these tag matches, so much can happen. So we're, we're really looking forward to all this. Um, Adrian's husband is actually our uh, welterweight champion as well. Okay, we're underway. We're underway, and that's a, a nice strike there from, uh, from High Point. They're right off the bat, you know – they, they know that they're bowling against a team that's missing one of their key people. And so they know they need to jump on it. Daphne's going to be doing much, much of the heavy, heavy lifting. Um, the tags will be uh, very strategic. I wouldn't expect Megan to bowl more than two or three frames a game. Um, Daphne's going to have to do a lot of the work here. But uh, Daphne knows that coming in. So we'll see how she, uh, how she performs today and, and carries the load here for the Savages. All right, there she goes. Daphne's starting off uh, very nice here on lane four. So, yeah, you're going to see a lot in this tag match. It's like a lot of our matches. You're going to see, uh, you know, first person bowls on the left lane, then they bowl on the right lane. So you'll, you'll see it's the, the same match play uh, format you'll see in, uh, the, you know, PBA and other uh, bowling associations as well. So. Now, they are bowling on fresh, but I've noticed in watching 
all day long. There's a lot of friction, it seems like, built into this place. Yeah, this place, I mean, because I, I just got done bowling the squad before this on three and four, actually, and the, the amount of hook was just ridiculous. I mean, it, I didn't have anything I could ball down low enough to to where I could play how I want to. Um, I'm not really good at keeping the ball speed slow. When I did, I struck, but then when I didn't, I, you know, I just, but, but most of these girls are better than me too, so <laughs> I can't, uh, so, so my poor performance earlier is not really a reflection on them, but yes, the, this place is uh, hooking out the building. And I actually think that's going to help these ladies. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, I think they're going to put up some big scores. Yes. Uh, it is it is a modified house pattern, right? No, it it, it what well, is it is what their house pattern is. Okay. Supposedly, you, okay. You never really can tell for sure. Yeah. Um, but it but it's, it's def definitely not a sports shot or anything like that. It's designed to score, um, if you can do everything um, do everything correctly. So okay. They'll, they'll do well. been a busy day on bowl tv we've got uh collegiate sectionals going on in four different locations in addition to this coverage we've got here of uba mega bowl so hope you're enjoying all the coverage pba just wrapped up prior to us coming here and uh they'll actually end the weekend with the pba hall of fame induction ceremony on sunday night which will be free to watch for anybody so you have friends that have been interested in checking out Bowl TV. That one's free to watch. That's very good. That's very cool. Yeah, the and then uh, kicks off Tournament of Champions week for PBA starting on Monday. That's really cool. Y'all, y'all are doing some amazing things really for bowling. You know, it's it's so good to see uh, exposure. It's it's so good to to just having the content out there. You know, we we get some content uh, for the UBA that we've got on our uh, YouTube page and stuff uh, that's doing really well. You know, we got you know one of Daphne's recent title uh, defenses uh, had over fifty thousand views in less than a month, nice. and it, and stuff like that. You know, it's people like watching the ladies bowl, just for the simple fact that they do so much mechanically right yeah. that a lot of the a lot of guys like myself don't don't really do. The girls are very fundamentally sound. Uh, they take direction really well. You know, most of them got somebody, a spouse, or somebody else on their team that's going to keep them focused so it's really good like it's it's really good what you guys are doing and letting us um you know be here y'all being here today with us means a lot to us um i really like the the collegiate stuff y'all are doing for some fact that we're getting more and more collegiate bowlers in the uba absolutely you know, yeah they, they, it's so it's it's so much of it, it's like a everything is like a farm system now right you know right. so it, it's really uh, it's really good, man. It's not a. It's not a. It's not like the golf world now, where you got you know got live and you got the uh, the, the PGA and stuff. Like, it's it's not a battle. Everybody's got their place and can feed off each other and bowl different things. Um, UBA, we've got plenty of guys that bowl on the, the PBA tour, PBA 50. Yeah. You know, so it, it's really cool that everything uh, just kind of comes together, and you guys are a real integral part of that. So I definitely appreciate what you guys are doing for us as well. Well, like you said, Daphne's uh, not disappointing here early. No, no, Daphne's got the front four, and she's gonna. Uh, she she strikes a lot. Um, her her husband uh, Nick Smith is a, a you know drills balls. He's he's really good coach with, with adjustments and things like that. Uh, Daphne's on staff with uh, Rotor Grip, so you know she's gonna be throwing Storm and Rotor Grip stuff. So definitely got to throw that out there. Storm's uh, one of the UBA sponsors uh, as well, and. Uh, Daphne's just great for the sport and, and everything she's done. So, yeah, big thanks to Storm for their sponsorship of uh, UBA. And we had uh, Randy Peterson out at the, uh, the Battle Bowl event last year. Yep, yep. H helped call some of the uh, the action for us. Yeah, it was good to good to see Randy. It, and that's just more of that, you know, where bowling is its own kind of community. So where you can do different parts, you can. You can bowl UBA, you can go bowl a regional, a PBA regional, uh, you can just bowl league, uh, you got the collegiate stuff. There's so much of it, and it's nice when you see the uh, working together. You know, it's not out to get each other. So it's, it's really good to see. It was really good. I got to meet, that was the first time I got to meet Randy last year, so 
uh, hopefully he'll make it make the trip out again this year, or, or maybe we'll have some other staffers out. Yeah. Well, so. Okay. Well, uh, C Swag out to a, an early lead here in that match on five and six. Yeah, C Swag is uh they they're doing really good. Their team is doing really good in the UBA this season. Uh, they got bowlers all over. They travel really well. They got a number of them here to cheer these two on as well. So let's see what Roxy does here. She can give them a turkey. That's a great shot from Roxy right there. That was sweet. Daphne with another strike over on three and four. So now her team with the front five. And see, she's getting, and, and the strategy is going to start to come in at some point. So Daphne's going to throw this ball in the sixth. But at some point, they're going to have to get Megan in there. So um, High Point knows that too. So they got to stay focused on what they're doing and just hope that they're able to jump on the tag when it happens. Well, Instead Daphne not giving them any room to breathe. <laughs> no, no. She, front, front six for Daphne. Like, you know, she they know what they're doing over there. Um, Megan's nerves on her first first shot is going to be something to watch. But right now, it's, it's, it's the Daphne show. Well, Team High Point going to need to keep striking. Stay in this one. Their max score is 259. So it's still not over yet here in game number one. On. Nice. Yep. Good shot there. That was a great shot. So yeah, I mean, because when when Megan gets up for the for the Savages, you know, who knows what the pressure is going to be for? Is she going to open? Is she going to leave a big four? Like you don't ever know. You know, God forbid she throws a gutter ball or something like that. But you know, this is this is a lot for somebody on their first hunt. You know, we had girls when when we the Vixens that we first started with 16 teams. You know that that weren't ready, that have bowled uh, WCS UBA stuff before, and this is all new to Megan. This is all just brand new for her. So we're really interested to see how it's going to be when she gets up to to bowl here. Yeah, nobody wants to be the one to to dump a big lead. Oh, oh nice <laughs> break there. Yeah, the five ten came out nice there for it. I thought it was going to stay, but but it worked. So let's see if we get all right. So yes, we're going to see. This is uh, Megan's debut here. And I'll tell you, if she strikes here, I, I would venture to say that it's going to be a, a, a game one win already. It's been a while since she's thrown a shot, though. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of part of it, too. That, you know, maybe they should have got the tag out of the way and let Daphne, you know, run it down, but... Oh, hell. Okay. That's nice right there. Well, yeah. it doesn't seem to be Ooh. too nervous there. No, no, she could. <laughs> and, and, and you can see, they got... Uh, Got some uh, some supporters here. Got some savages in the building. Uh, got our our uh, cap tag team champs uh, from uh, the Carolina Gatekeepers are here. Uh, you see Jack Ness is here from from G Town. They're the uncapped tag team champions. So they definitely got some support to help her through that. So. C Swag opening the door just a little bit. Here in game number one on five and six, and uh, Savage is now with the front eight. Maybe see an early 300 game here. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. And, and, and out of these four teams, if I had to pick one that would have been the most likely to do it, it, it wouldn't have been the Savages. You know, just for the fact that you got a new person kind of coming in off the street, so to speak. You know, because Daphne can only do so much, but right now they're making it work. There you go. Rock, good strike for Roxy. And uh, with that front eight, Savages just need to stay clean the last two frames, and they will lock up game number one. Nice. Right. from Heather there, that was pretty nice. But really, it is, it, three and four, it's just what the Savages do now at this point. They pretty much, like you said, just got to stay clean, and they'll have the game one win. The... Uh, the Roll Carolina Rollers, they've got to kind of figure out, you know, maybe start looking ahead to game two. 
Uh, it's not, they're not out of game one yet, but at the same time, you know, that's the good part about this. Total pinfall is irrelevant. You know, you can win four games by one pin and lose the other three by 100, and it's fine. Right. You won. You won you first, it's the first of four. Ooh. Ooh. I thought I was going to be a lily there for a second on lane five. Um, but <laughs> then it went to five few. Seven, so. They're, they've got brand new pins here. Oh, yeah. And I saw a lot of four, five, sevens, four, I saw a four, five, ten with the seven go out late. So Lily with a four pin almost. So yeah, quite a few uh, unusual leaves just because of the new pins. Well, without miss, the rollers gonna need a lot of help here in game number one to have any chance. All right. Yeah, so open. Had open for a high point there. I mean, yeah, it's, it's done. So game one is, is happy yeah. regardless. Yeah, that open frame seals the deal. Only thing left to determine is can the Savages shoot 300? Ooh. And the answer is no. The answer is no. But, I mean, it's kind of good to kind of get these nerves out of her system. Uh, for leaving a 4 7 10. You know, you already hear people saying, you know, just get the two, you know, and keep it moving. It, it's, you're up 1-0, just that, yep. that's, the, that's what you want. You know, the score, yeah, it's great to shoot 300s. We would have loved to have seen it. Uh, the people watching in, in attendance and on, on uh, Bowl TV would love to see it as well. But, you know, unfortunately it's not going to happen right now. Who's to say it won't happen later? Also could be good also because of no letdown. You know, they yeah. sometimes you bowl 300, it takes a lot out of you, and yep. you have a letdown the next game. Mm -hmm. So yep, maybe getting that open frame out of the way with the win already locked up, maybe right. we'll be good for game number two. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, too, is see if, so if she would have struck there and if High Point would have struck and it would have had a little bit of pressure on uh, the Savages, Daphne would probably come in and throw right now. All Daphne's got to throw is the last ball. Yeah. So all the other stuff. Another good shot there from Megan. One more strike, and they'll be in the 260s. Win a lot of games with 260. Yeah, that you do. That you definitely win a lot of games with 260s. Except me, that I had that winner take all. I did not. I, I didn't win <laughs> even with 260. But wow, well, uh, I'm any, sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Any, <laughs> tag matches are, are definitely a different format. Different. Uh, the scores mean so much, so much more. It's really exciting. So. Uh, Carolina Swags, these Swags already at uh, 161, so um, they can't get, they can't catch them. Uh, the Rollers can't catch uh, C Swags, so C Swags gonna be up 1-0 as well. So Savages 1-0 on three and four, and C Swag up 1-0 on five and six. Two fifty-five. That's impressive, you know. All right, just posted the uh, match standings update okay. in the chat. Yeah, so for those that haven't seen the, how the WCS action works here, um, they could actually, High Point could, they don't need to worry about their tags and stuff right now. They've already lost this game. So if they, it's, it's good to have that, that rule sometimes so where if you've got your partner struggling on a lane, you can let them try another ball out. You can let yeah. them do whatever because, you know, it's 1-0. You know, the score, like we said earlier, doesn't, mat doesn't matter. The important thing is that uh, they get ready for game two. Yeah, that's good strategy. And uh, rollers with just one strike here in the opening game. Yeah, and so a little little history on what the rollers have had to deal with is we, I, I didn't know and we didn't share this with uh, – everybody uh yet but um adrian was she was in a car accident yesterday and she was she got t-bone and we didn't know even if she was gonna be able to make it up here 
because um, they are from like the Charlotte area. So it was a lot of, you know, hoping I didn't have to find a replacement team and like all that kind of stuff. But luckily they made it in. Well, then all, then her partner on the, on the way here, um, somebody had to go get her because she had her car broke down. So they've had, had a tough go of it um, so far. So hopefully once they settle down, uh, they'll be able to, to give us a, the match that uh, we all would expect to see on five and six. All right, so we're gonna get, get the, the, the bonus coverage of watching uh, Nick Smith throw a ball at the Deadwood here on. Oh the yeah, that's yeah, that's always fun. It's always fun. I've, I've missed these at some of my seri my uh, tournament series that I run. I've, I've missed these unfortunately at times. <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of embarrassing. It's, yeah. Then you got to do it again. And you it's almost it. like missing a five pin here, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Do they powder you. Yeah. See, everybody getting a little excited. Nick, Nick got it. You know. <laughs> See, I, I try to get the ball a little bit down lane a little bit more when I throw at him. He, he literally threw it four feet into the gutter, but you know he the, the job got done. That's yeah, all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Getting the job. Well, done. sometimes you can also go a little too hard into the gutter, and it'll bounce out and go in the other gutter. Yeah, so, I mean I've that's another those, way to miss it. Yeah, I've seen those TikTok videos <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, have that kind of stuff going on too. <laughs> all right, so now Megan here has got a she's got to bowl the first three frames. So this is going to be a, a key start for the Savages here in game two. Came in a little high there. Yeah, and I think we, she's probably seeing a little bit of transition at this point, would be my guess. She hit the pocket her first couple of shots mm -hmm. after sitting for six frames. But it uh, looks like last couple of shots she's gone high. Mm -hmm. So may need to make a little bit of a, a move left. Yeah, she's got. I'm, I'm sure they're telling her that. You know, if you miss, if, if you miss left, move left. Because um, I don't know if how much I don't know enough about her to know if she can throw the ball harder and faster. You know, so she probably just needs to to don't don't worry about ball changes yet. Let's just let's see what we can do with our feet uh, and a little bit of lane play and go from there. So I, I really I think that they have a great support staff. That's going to help her uh, get through this uh, this game. I know we talked a lot about how much friction was built into this surface, but when you move in, mm -hmm. when they start to hook, is it is it like a cliff or is it pretty well blended? Um, it it, it can be both. And we got a five pin uh, leave here on. Uh, oh here, yeah, six. here yeah, we go. You know how the UBA is with these things. We love these. Don't miss this. No, don't miss this. <laughs> no, I was nervous earlier. I had a, uh, I was uh, my pair was on the stream earlier, and uh, I left the five pin twice. Luckily, I picked it up both times, but that was a whole different level of pressure. That looks good there. That was very okay. good. Very good. Center cut. Yep. She was she was confident in that one. I'd have been nervous. I'd have, you'd have seen my <laughs> legs shaking up there on that one for sure. But yeah, a lot of it's just going to be what kind of surface she has on her ball and all that when it comes to, you know, moving into more oil. But like I said, Nick's a PSO. Um, you know, he, he t does this stuff now for a living. So he he got her either in the right equipment, something with the right surface on it. And that's the thing, too, in WCS, you, you're allowed to change your surface. You know, it doesn't have the same, uh, you know, USB-C rules and uh, the UBA rules on, on surface changes and stuff. WCS, you can throw it left-handed right now if you want to, two-handed, gotcha. underhand. Please don't throw it overhead. <laughs> but but it, it can be done. There's not, it, It's because it's more for entertainment, uh, trying to mix entertainment in with the bowling. Oh, that was flush. That was nice. Okay, high point. Good game the first game, but uh, early lead here in game number two. Uh, even though they bowled the good game, they, they did drop it. Uh, due to that 250 plus game by the Savages. All right, let's see if Megan's gonna. She's gonna have to bowl back to back frames too. Because Daphne can't come in until the fourth. 
See that one didn't that didn't grab to come back. It just stayed out. Yeah. So I don't know if, if maybe they need to get her just to move in completely. Or I don't know how bad she missed her mark or maybe they get the wrong ball in her hand on that one. But it it just didn't move. back and asking for some advice. My feet an arrow right? That's what it looks like. She's, she's definitely righter than she was. Looks like the same ball. Yeah, it got, yeah, it, it hit the drive. Yeah, really yeah that hooked a lot. Yeah, you see how she's excited about the, the spare. Most people ain't gonna get that excited about a, a, a one-two spare like that, but um, it's a lot, a lot of pressure on her here. Uh, C swag, spare strike to start. You know, rollers opened in the first, um, had a split. I missed what what they actually left, but you know, rollers got to make sure that they they keep it clean. They can't they can't give games away to C swag. Can't give them frames at all. So eight count on lane three for Megan. So you know this, she's need to cover this up, and then they can start looking at getting Daphne in for the fourth frame, or depending on what High Point does, maybe they let Megan stay in for the fourth frame. We'll see how their strategy. Yeah, and goes. it's been a while since uh, Daphne got to throw a shot, and so I, I, my guess is they're going to be a little bit different once she gets up. Okay, so yeah, High Point does have the lead uh, per se, but we'll just have to see how. It's still it's still too early. That's the thing about these tag matches. It's too it's too early to uh, start speculating too much. It's just a matter of you know looking at their strategy and figuring out what they're gonna do and. So we got another split for the rollers on uh, lane five. Nice little five ten here. <laughs> so now we're waiting on a ball return issue on, uh, on five and six. Right, so let's see what high point is going to do here on lane four. Strike here would be huge. Ooh, almost left the 7-10, uh, but got the 7 out, so just the 10. Well, as they start to transition, did you did you find that as you had to jump in, you started to leave a lot more corner pins? Yeah, so I, 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 had, I changed balls a couple different times to try to avoid that, but it's hard with other people I had on my pair, too, uh, the way they were playing the lanes. Yeah, see, they can't. They can't miss single pins. That's that's something that they gotta they gotta clean that up. Is you start leaving single pins, even even if it's a seven or a ten, you know you gotta just keep your. your they they need to win the three games that Megan started, you know, because that's when she's gonna be bold the most. Yeah. And so you know you got you gotta jump on that. You know, it's kind of like in, in Major League Baseball. You know, when you got your your starting pitchers that get twenty games, twenty wins, and how they do in the playoffs, and then you know you're going to have that game where they got that 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 starting pitcher that finished like 12 and 11, you know, you know, like I got to yeah, win yeah. that game, yeah, you know. And so the same thing is they they have to go, okay, we got to beat Megan the three games she starts, we got to beat Savages those three games, and then we just got to catch Daphne again. That has to be the way High Point looks at this. Well, bounce back from the open frame with a strike. Yep. So both teams now went through and and after three frames made the tag. So it's just now we'll have to see how long that those two girls stay in because they both have the better looks on their team. And uh, let's see what Daphne's look is after uh, starting with the front six and tagging out. Hasn't thrown a shot since. Let's see if she makes a little move here. Certainly uh, trying to get her arm loose.
Looks good from here. Yeah, good aggressive shot. She hasn't missed yet. No, she's she's solid. She's um she's solid. She's got uh, many 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 females are scared to bowl her. Well, you very can see sad. why. Oh yeah. <laughs> when yeah. someone doesn't miss, yep. they're hard to beat. And it's not, it is not to take nothing away from her, from Nick and her support staff and stuff, but she bowls really well all the time. You know, having that extra pair of eyes helps her out from time to time. But she's had plenty of these matches and singles where she she'll be the only one there, and she'll she'll make the adjust herself. And she she's just she's a very solid bowler, uh, one of the best ones we've had in WCS um, in, in in the series existence. Now eight for eight. And uh, that gives Savages the lead in the game. High Point can take it right back with a strike here. So C-Swag is uh, Dutch so far on five and six. And so we'll see what Sheena's gonna do here on lane six. It, it's, there's, it's got three splits for the Rollers, have three splits so far. So C Swag's just kind of in a situation where they just gotta not make any big moves. There's no there's no reason to get ahead of yourself. Just keep marking. Rollers are not putting any pressure on them yet. It, it's you know, it's one of those ones where you're hoping they figure it out because you want it to be a competitive match, but it's 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 kinda of looking like the struggle is lasting too long here, so C Swag's got to keep that swag going and make sure they don't open the door for a possible comeback here in game two. And she covered the 2 8. That's very nice. Yep, they're doing a nice job of filling frames. Yep. Yep. That's all they got to do right now, is just fill frames. Hmm, 10 pin there. 10 pin on lane five as well. Important for High Point to uh, make th make this ten pin, Ooh, especially ten pin. with Daphne Smith on a roll. Yeah, yeah, she she got the strike, uh, she got the spare there, and it, and it's, it's just they can't. So, being that they didn't strike and start stringing them here in the middle, they went ahead and Savage is like, okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna get Megan in here, get that tag set out the way, and we'll see where we uh, where we go from here. Yeah, it came through the nose there. Left the left the six ten. Attention, you be Attention, UBA bowlers. If you're here for the seven p.m. on Holy Squad, we will be doing check-in behind lanes thirty-nine and forty. We're gonna do check-in for the unholy squad behind lanes thirty-nine and forty. So now let's see if Adrian can get a spare squad. here on six. And she does. All right, so the so C-Sag is spare, strike, spare, strike, spare. I'm going to put, I'd put money on a strike here. There we go. See? Smart bet. That would have been a great bet, man. You should have took me up on it. See if they can strike on the right lane. Yeah, that's... That's the thing, but but they're not having pressure. Yeah, they don't to need to. <laughs> like you said, they keep filling frames. They're gonna go up two nothing here. Max score for the rollers two oh five, but uh, they've only thrown two strikes the whole match so far. Yeah. And Daphne back in. Daphne back striking. Close to being a strike there on lane six, but uh, high flush 10 pin. Yeah. Kind of an unusual leave. Ooh. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, no. First open frame there for C Swag, but uh, they've got a big lead still. Yeah, the lead, lead is huge. They're going to need to, the, the roller's going to have to start striking. Like, there's no, they, they mar just marking is not enough right now. They're going to, they need to double here, maybe get the next three to have a chance at this game. Or at least they need to go ahead and start fishing for game three because they're definitely behind here. Ooh, that looked really good. Cool. That was sweet. <laughs> that was really nice. Get some more of them. They'll be in. Yeah, one more strike and here. And you never know. Yep. Lead will just be 13 at, at that point if uh, rollers can find a way to get a double here in the eighth. And that might be a little bit of pressure that, that they need to put on C-Swag. Because C-Swag has not felt any pressure at all yet in this game or even last game in this match it's it's, it's been very uh very one-sided so far okay all right okay and uh you know when you miss a spare an easy spare and then your opponent gets up and throws a double mm -hmm. that adds a lot of pressure all of a sudden you think am i gonna choke this one away and and it's it's very smart that what c like c swag is doing though is they went ahead and they tagged roxy back in so Roxy's back in now, and, you know, that way Sheena don't have to think about her last shot right now. You know, Roxy's fresh. She can think about the last time she was in. Let's see if she can continue the strikes. Yep. Great shot. Yeah, that was, that was very nice. So they're, they're still striking on that left wing. So, and then tagging right back out. So their strategy there made sense to me, you know. Sheena missed a, a easy 10 pin. So let's go ahead and get Roxy in. You know, make sure we get the frame filled and kind of take a uh, take a break. She did make a good shot on this lane last time up. Could have very easily been a strike. And made a little oh, adjustment, and that one was just flush, 10 yeah. back. Yeah. That, that's probably the best strike she's had on either lane. So it's just really nice to see how the, the strategy of it all, you know, really helped them right there. You know, get the tag in. You know, give her a breather so she don't have to think about it. Her opponent just doubled, and it's working really well for him right now. Big shot here for Daphne. And she gives her team the lead with just two frames left here in game number two, trying to take a 2 nothing lead. That uh, 210 is probably going to be all she wrote for game number two for the Rollers. Yeah, that's even even if she were to spare it, it's just they they, they got to get a, a feel. It's like they don't have a, any kind of momentum. You know, they're both just kind of bowling. They're not not feeling it right yet. So Daphne smith her first miss of nice oh, conversion oh, there oh wow. yeah okay of the 210 but uh, max score for the rollers 183 and uh c swag will just need decent count yeah yep so i would definitely uh i think she's checking to see what they want to do as far as the rest of this match the rest of this game rather so adrian's gonna sit and let Moana go ahead and finish this up. Daphne, 10 pin, perfect. Okay, this one's not over. High point can still go off the sheet for 215. Savages max score 214, so. A little suspense here. Yeah, big, big shot here in the ninth. Yeah. And they, they, they definitely need this first one because what it's going to do is, remember, Megan has to throw the last shot. So I'm sure Daphne will probably throw the first two. But the last shot is going to go to Megan. Oh, there's a strike. Okay. Well, that sets up the 10th frame. Ooh. Yeah, this is exciting. I like it.
Yeah, if, if High Point can get these next two, it's going to make no matter when Megan bowls to finish the game, it's going to put pressure on her. So, see if Heather can uh, double here. Ooh, seven, wow. Ten. Wow. Wow. That uh, is not a good time for that. No. That sucks. I feel bad for him on that one. They almost had the chance to, to put that pressure back on the Savages, but now Savages can, can kind of breathe, just close the frame, just mark. You know, they could go two spare and be fine. So just five pins needed here for Daphne Smith. I think uh, considering the fact she's been eight for nine on, on strikes tonight, I think we're going to yeah, give we, it to her. Yeah, we, we definitely. I mean, I, I would bet everything I've got, everything you've got, everything everybody we know got that she gives at least five. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. So. Almost leaves a 7-10, but the count is yep. enough. And yep, both... The Savages and C-Swag going to take a 2-0 lead. Heading into game number three. Yep. And you see here, um, you see uh, this young man in front of us behind uh, Jack's here, uh, behind Daphne here. That's, uh, that's her son. That uh, He's a two-hander. And he's one that's been bowling more and more tournaments. So we're going it, to uh, give him a couple more years. We're going to see him on oh, some, yeah. uh, some collegiate stuff as well. He's uh, junior really, gold, maybe. Yeah, junior gold. Uh, I believe he's already qualified, if I'm not mistaken. They, uh, they're they're based out of South Carolina, which is where I'm where I'm out of, and uh, he's on the interstate uh, all star team. So I get to get the, the pleasure of uh, seeing the Smiths once a month down there for practice. So it's it's really good. It, it, it's a whole good bowling family that they've got going on there in uh, in Spartanburg. All right, game number three starting up on five and six. Two oh three, the final score for the Savages as they take a two nothing lead. Two oh three to one eighty three here in game number two. Good. Roxy getting up here on the left lane. She was killing this lane last game. Ooh. No, that was, that was a terrible shot right there. Really light. Um, nothing worse than leaving the 2-5 sometimes because there's so many things that, that you either you or your ball did wrong there. But I still think she'll cover it and we'll be all square through one. It looks like she got a little bit of a break with the pins coming together just a touch, so make it a little more difficult to chop. That's got to hook a lot. Mm. Okay. It's just, still dry. Yeah. Just, it's <laughs> never dry out there. It's, it's still dry. <laughs> yep. if, if I wouldn't have bowled on it earlier, I would have felt the same way that that was going to chop. But nope. Now let's see what kind of start uh, Daphne gives us here. Here in game three. Nice shot. Yeah, that's a great ball from Roxy there. Looks a whole lot better than the first one did. Oh, okay. Wow. Somewhere Emil Williams Jr. is very sad yeah. about that. Yeah, I was ready to say good shot because it looked good until it left that. 
Okay. Oh, five pin kicking the five pin forward. Okay. You know, you know. Sometimes bowling's not fair. No, that one strikes, and the one next to it solid eights. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the bowling, the perfect shots, don't reward. Okay, no trouble on the spare. Five pin here on Trying six. to get two back-to-back -back five pin trips on a Brooklyn. Everybody's got their hand up now. Yeah, bar is still open. So we'll see how this plays out here. Okay. Got the five I, was, I was a little nervous there for a second, but. Yeah. Yeah. They're not getting, they're not getting the pin action. At, uh, they're not getting the pin action on five and six, really. Neither team, really, is that, uh, that uh, they're getting on uh, three and four. Both high point and, uh, and the Savages are getting, getting really good pin carry. Their entry angle is a little bit better, too. Strike for Heather. There we go. Nice, nice shot there in the second for a double. Gives High Point the early lead here in game number three. See, Swag can do the same with better shot there. See, that one didn't roll out. I think in the yep. first frame she just missed it a little bit. The ball rolled out. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just didn't want to turn no more. It just, it just rolled out really. You know, you wouldn't if you went back and looked at that first frame again. You would not know that the bowler that just bowled on that same frame was the same person. Like the ball reaction was completely. Yeah. Different. Oh yeah. All right. So uh, high point right now. They've got the first three. Maybe they're gonna. Uh, maybe they're gonna put the pre try to put some pressure on Daphne here. Well, Daphne, solid eight. Her first shot on this lane. So. Probably should be a double up on the board. But now needs a strike to avoid falling behind by 20 here in the third frame. Nice spare from Roxy. So this is the most competitive game we've had this early. No eight six. pin there, ball ran it over. a half 10 and a ring and 10 there. Yeah, it's like the pin couldn't remember what it was supposed to do there. So it just kind of started the ring and then just died and then just went flat. Okay, Daphne Smith continues to be solid on strikes and spares. Mm. So Heather had the first three for high point and she is staying in. Gotta kinda go with the hot hand. That's the, the, the benefits of this format. Oh, man. Pretty good. Just 
can't pop the 10 out of there. With the spare, high point will lead by 10 here in game number three. Could have taken a 20, 21 pin lead though with the strike there. Yeah, and they, they really just gotta just stay on it. They can't, if she misses this 10 pin, <clears throat> that's gonna be a huge boost for the Savages here. But she's missed the 10 pin uh, the first game too. Uh oh. No, yeah, see that, that, don't, that was, looked like she was throwing at the five pin. And just like that, Savages take the lead sitting on the bench. Ten, we're starting to see a little more and more corner pins now. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of that's probably just transition, right? Just yeah. ball picking up a little bit sooner and not going through the pins on as nice of an angle as it was a little earlier. Right. Got to decide if, uh, if you can just inch a little bit in or if it's time to make a ball change. And that's what's good sometimes with these matches is you've got, ha being in a tag situation, you've got a partner to lean on that you can bounce your idea off of. You know, hey, what do I need to do? Another set of eyes is always just great. All right, spare on three by April. So gonna put some pressure back on the Savages. Watching her on the approach was very, very interesting because it, she walks over to the corner, like walks over to five just to throw it back at the head pin. Yeah. You know, that, I think that's something that um, she needs to work on. Like, because it's, you're, you're, sometimes you're moving so much your body weight and your momentum one way, and then you're stopping to turn and throw it a different way. It makes it harder. You know, it's one thing to walk straight and then turn at the end, but when you're kind of, you know, not having a smooth, approach and you're just walking from left to right and then throwing back to left it could be a little rough all right Daphne for two yep okay I mean, she strikes a lot anyway, but it feels like after that missed 10 pin, she just jumped all over it. Yeah, she's, she's a blood in the water person. You know, she, she's one that uh, she never takes her opponents for granted, but she knows that, you know, this is my time to strike. This is when I need to step up and, and do what I do. And she's great at it. You know, she's, her ego never gets in the way. Um, she's just a very solid bowler and just knows when it's, that much more important, you know. Yeah, so she needs she needs a ball change on uh, April. Just that that's the, the ball. It, it's not getting out far enough right. So she's either got to adjust a lot or ball down. Right, nice strike from Roxy. Yeah, and she's got slower ball speed. Uh, April, I'm yep. talking about and and. You know, she's going to see the transition a lot sooner than some of the players that are throwing a little harder and straighter. Yeah, so she's either got to move move way left, throw it way further right, or or try to ball down. or, or so, she got to do something different because it's not working for them right now. And this is a game they're going to wish they really would get because... All right, gets a break, makes it on the inside. Yeah, you're not supposed to pick it up that way. But no. But... But it was a good tag, though. It was yeah. Good to get April out, get Heather in, and uh, and make it happen. 
see Swag opens the door just a little bit yeah. with the open frame there in the eighth. Yeah, so this is uh, it's gonna be big here. Adrian's got a got a strike here. Well, no, might have been their chance. Yeah, because they, it's she trying to she kind of threw it. One did earlier, like just she's not swinging it at all. She's just kind of like they're kind of throwing it at the pocket and like letting it not letting it roll to the pocket. Yeah. Yeah, there's certainly some help if you use the uh, the pattern and another. 310 made on the inside. I mean, hey, as long as they fall. Yeah. The scoreboard at the top is all, all, all that really matters. Got the button nice there. spare. That's not, not a spare you want to be shooting at. No. There's so many things that go wrong in those. Couple of strikes here for the Savages. They would pretty much lock up game number three. Yes, yeah, big big frame for Megan here. Uh oh. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So we got three off both sides. Yeah, that's the bucket. But <laughs> we moved, moved into the middle there. Yeah. The middle bucket. Okay, makes it on the Brooklyn yeah. side, yeah. but it's all good. Yeah, still the same on the scoreboard. Yeah, she she threw it left on twice in that frame. Roxy buried it. Great shot. All right, so Sheena's gonna come back in. Sheena's just got to be decent here because uh, rollers, their yeah. max is 160. Uh, First hit in the 10th here yeah. lo locks up the game. Yeah. There it is. That one was sweet. Yeah. Daphne back in with a big strike in the 8th. Able to bump the 10 out. Okay, even with that miss, that's going to be enough for C Swag to take a 3 0 lead. Yeah, she, I think Rollers kind of conceded that one a little bit because normally they would wait for uh, their opponent to finish, but uh, she kind of jumped up and went ahead and started her 10th frame then. But yeah, 3-0 three, three swag. Super big shot here in the ninth. Yeah, April needs to needs to strike. It's got to push. Oh, uh, or not? Yeah, just I mean, go Brooklyn. Yeah, I was gonna say she she at least made the ball change, but I, it might not have been the right ball change because she missed that one way left. But they carried the solid matters, got the strike, and gonna put a little bit of pressure on the Savages here in the thing. Ooh. Okay. So rollers now they're in a situation where they're gonna they're gonna have to do what they didn't do to get here, and that's go to game seven if they're gonna have a chance to win. They're gonna have to win four, five, six, and seven to move on to tomorrow. There you go, making making wow. the strike. <laughs> yeah. That's that's hard to do after 
After that, yeah, that going uh, three off the left your last time. Yeah. Yeah, just, just said it with the new one. Just said it with. Okay, here's the deal. High point, max score 231. Savages, max score 245. So first hit, seven spare would do it. Got to have this one, though, to shut out high point. My money would be on her striking here. Ooh. Okay. She's had a few issues on this lane the last couple of times up getting the 10 out. So spare and a strike, that'll force high point to double. Mm -hmm. Really a spare and anything better than seven. Yeah. Rollers off to a good start here in game four with the strike. Okay. Yep. Definitely a spare there. Yeah, so they, she, like I said, she could strike here 224, but 231 is high points, Max. So the higher the count here for Daphne, the little bit more pressure to put on high point, but high point just can't get in their own way because they started really well, then their middle frames were just, eh, and you know, on a double. So. And back. Okay. Well, we set it up. Yep. Two strikes, four pins. Otherwise, it's three nothing. going to do it. So the Savages and C-Swag both take 3 nothing leads. Yeah. The flag's starting with a double already. So It's a really, really nice. But just kind of want to remind everybody, you know, how everything came about again. Um, we started with 16 teams in January. Uh, the Vixens really wanted to start their own uh, cap tag team series. Uh, we got got it all worked out. Got the, got the plans in motion. Uh, had a qualifying tournament in uh, uh, Durham, North Carolina. Six took the top eight. Then we started doing. Uh, we did a, a Facebook live where we did the, who was going to bowl who, and uh, kind of led to here where you know they all had their matches. The Carolina Rollers were the eight, kind of the not that eight seed so to speak, but they were eighth in the qualifying tournament and. Uh, you know, they, you know, did, were the only team that only, to win in five. You know, they didn't have to take seven games um, like the other three series did. But, you know, so they beat um, uh, CCH was the Capital City hitters. And it was very impressive because CCH was the, was the number one. They're the ones that led and uh, won the qualifier. So it was a lot, lot going on there. So the Rollers, you could say maybe they were over, in, over their head. You know, a little bit. I'm kind of lucky to be here, but um, they held their own in February, and um, you know, because of that, I can't close the door on them yet. But they they got to stop splitting uh, the, the the two fours up there on the, on the board for the second frame is not good. But they're 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 solid enough to get it together. They just got to stop missing. Yeah, they're they're just so far right that, and they have really very little hold. If they miss left, the ball goes high, goes Brooklyn. Yeah, and, and one thing you see is with, with their team is, like, they've got people here, but they, they don't really have anybody getting up and, like, kind of coaching, you know, through the whole, whole uh, sort of, uh, through the situation. And they're just kind of left up there by themselves, you know. They've got supporters, but they don't, they're not getting the support that they that they need. I think we've seen more things that they need to adjust than their, their people, their spectators have so far.
So the C-Swag they got here uh, took them seven to advance. You know, they're very, uh, very confident. Uh, Roxy and Sheena are excellent bowlers. Um, they're both getting better every week, so they're hot commodities when it comes to handicap events because they're 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 better than their averages, so to speak. Uh, but two of, two of the most loved people um, in the UVA in the WCS. Uh, everybody loves uh, Sheena and Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I had a minor interruption there from a, from a gentleman. Ooh, now, see, high point right there. Their spare shooting is going to, when they look it back at this, because it's, it's not looking good for them. When, when they go back and look at this, their spare shooting has been just atrocious. They're missing so many single pins. They're missing um, just easy spares. And it's just, they, they, when they've had the opportunity to jump on the Savages, they haven't done it. And the fact that Daphne's doing what Daphne does, and Megan is performing better than someone could honestly expect, High Point can't, can't hand stuff away, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Well, it's starting to look like we could have a, a couple of sweeps here. Yeah. It would be, be nice if the rollers, the rollers got here. Oh, he's missing the pocket now. When you, when you start missing the head pin, when you're already down three games, you're kind of leaving it uh, leaving it open here. And now it's, they're not even waiting on each other to bowl. As my good friend John Gaines used to say, it's time to throw it bad from somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to keep that in mind next time. Uh, next time I'm bowling, <laughs> it's got a hook, man. Must feel like they're bowling on on the top of a roof. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, we're, we're um, Savages. Uh, they're still up 3-0. C Swag's up 3-0. Um, Megan is not holding her own here, and we'll see if she can if she can spare this 10 pin. Because it's really no matter what she does, she's putting pressure on High Point because High Point has just been uh, really struggling with their spare shooting. Somehow she got that that 10 pin right there. <laughs> it just, you could tell she didn't know it was gonna go. Yeah. But it, but it fell, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters right here for these ladies. Okay, a little opening for the rollers, maybe? Yeah. Seems like every game they've had one little opening, and they just haven't been able to take advantage of it. Yeah, they, they haven't been very opportunistic. The you know, rollers just kind of like, they're just kind of bowling, and they're not able to put their, their, their foot on their throat. Like you can tell, Sheena's not even. It doesn't even bother her that that they just open. You know, it's um, still a 20-pin lead for C Swag, yeah. but the rollers with the chance to put some pressure on. Alana with a strike here. Yeah. Great All shot. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they can't miss anymore. Okay, open frame early here for the Savages. They trail now by three pins here in game number four. Yeah, yeah so that high point, high point's got a chance. They really do. But they, they can't, because Daphne's gonna come back in in the fourth. Daphne will probably bowl the next four frames. So high points got to start striking. They got to, they got to try to get a get a game here. But we'll be able to tell a lot because you can tell when April's 
thrown her spare shots that she's not executing very well. That was a strike right there that uh, I surprised didn't leave the 10 pin, honestly. So, are they going to, Heather going to come back in here? Nope, April's going to bowl another one. put it away. Yeah. chance to, to come back here. Ooh, okay. okay. I thought she was going to take out the 10 and leave the 6. All even. Yeah. Going into the 10th. Rollers have to win to stay alive. Trailing 3-0. And that's now a turkey for high point. So they are up 13 here in game four. Great okay. shot. Yeah. So she, she needs this next one. Put, put, the, put the pressure on Swag because you've not done it yet. Rollers have not put pressure on Swag. If she can, get, uh, if she can close this out, it'd be fantastic. And really put pressure on uh, Swag for the first time to avoid a game five situation. Oh, Ooh, no. not a bad shot. Just a little high, leaves a 410. Great shot. Okay, what happens if there's a tie? So they do a ninth, 10th frame roll off if there's a tie. Okay. So that'll be, and they gotta do a tag in there as well. So that's what's gonna get a little interesting. Uh-oh. Mm. All, right. All right. Leaves the door open just a little bit. Yep. So double nine. Double nine to wrap up the match. Yep. And this has been a great lane for Roxy, too. I feel like every time we've looked up on lane five, she's struck. <laughs> oh, high flush. High flush. That two is stubborn looking. <laughs> right. Here, Daphne working on a double. Roll, roll, roll. No. Got the got the crowd blaming the rack for not uh, <laughs> giving that that message. It's time to roll over there. Gotta have it. Yeah. Oh! All right, so here we go. 
Eight, we have a ninth, ten, roll off. Nine or better. C Swag will move on to the finals tomorrow to become the first Vixens cap tag team champions. Nice 10 pin spare by Daphne. All right, they got to tag Sheena back in. So this is, Sheena's got to finish this match. She's got to throw this ball. She needs nine or better. Oh, hook. Oh, no. It's a loser. Oh. All right, and we're going to game five. Going to game five. Wow. Wow. Oh, man. Got some of those who are you in the tenth chants going on here. That's all kind of stuff. Man. So, game five. All right, Roxy's going to start here. See if she can keep that same momentum she had on the on the uh, left lane in the last game. Right, spare by Daphne. All right, strike from Roxy, starting us off. Yeah, Sheena threw that last ball so far right that it just it wasn't the desert wouldn't have been dry enough for that yeah. comeback. Yeah, it just it just ate it up and made the ball roll out. Yep. And uh couldn't get back. And then didn't really have much on it to mm -hmm. mix the pins around. No. Almost up to 7-10 again. Oh, oh. Wow. wow. And she's had a, a lot of trouble making 10 pins, so yep. that would have been big to. And then it fell off the back. Yeah, so that was one that, that 10 pin was questionable. It's about, it about to fall. So yeah, that ten pin, like it was one of those things that didn't. Yeah, it's just tough. Yeah. I mean, it, it. So we're waiting on a respot of the ten pin on lane four. It was in the process of kind of falling, but it hadn't fallen yet, and the rack came down and. Uh, grabbed it, picked it up, set it down, but then it fell out the back. So they got to respot the ten. So add to our uh, our delay here. Roxy on six. Uh oh. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. 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 When you're good, you're good. When you're lucky, you're lucky. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come down to the wire here in game four on uh, on the left lanes too because uh, it's a one pin difference in favor of the Savages. But game. Four is the game that Megan has to finish, and the pressure is kind of kind of building a sense because we got people showing up for the next unholy squad. So we've got a lot of people that yeah. you know are kind of wanting us to, to be done so they can get prepared and all that stuff. So it's just a lot more tension and pressure going on. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, how this plays out when it, if it gets to where it's in Megan's hand at the end.
rollers hanging in there. Yeah. If I, if I was C-Swag, I would keep Roxy in until she misses. Rollers just, they haven't been able to string anything. They it just, it's, it's unfortunate. I don't know, I don't know if they've had three in a row at all over the, the course of these four games. Dabney, yep, strike. on six for four in a row. Oh, yeah. She buried it. Daphne buries hers on three. It's a big strike there in the ninth. Yeah, yeah every, every strike by Daphne is less pressure on her partner. But high points, they, they're going to have to... They just need to strike. They got to put, figure out a way to put the pressure on Savage in the tent. But if they don't strike here, you can pretty much bring the brooms out. That it'd be a sweep in favor of the Savage. Ooh, ooh, yeah, almost a 7-10 there by Roxy, but got the seven out. Just got to throw it this 10 pin now. Wrap 10. So she needs to spare this or their max will be under 200. Oh, goodness. So uh, Roxy's uh, spare attempt missed twice. It missed in front of the 10 pin. No, come on. Uh, missed in front of the 10 pin and uh, uh, missed to the right of the 10 pin, came out the gutter, still missed the 10 pin. Uh, would have probably took out the, the nine, maybe the eight even. And no, Heather open. Oh my. So now they're, they are literally at a 189 max. Um, they're already at 163. The Savages are already at 163. Uh, Seems like whenever uh, C Swag opens, the rollers find a way to throw a quick double and get themselves right back in it. Yeah, but if it's uh, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm, I'm just not feeling like they are, are sensing the moment. You know, like that this is an opportunity. They they should have lost. They should have lost game uh, four. They've managed to survive. There you go. All right. Okay. All right. So pressure is uh, Roxy staying in here for the six. Thought they'd take her out after the uh, open, but she's still in. Very nice. Maybe she was mad. She just wanted to redeem herself right yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah, because now she's she's even moved over. She's gonna bowl the uh, bowl the seventh frame too, but she's gonna put the pressure on their tags. Much better. Yeah. Very aggressive. Yeah, that, that, was, that was one of those uh, get on my back, I got this kind of throws. 
All right, so 188 for high point. It's a good count here. Yeah, strike, strike here will do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. So Savages are moving on to face the winner of C-Swag and the Rollers tomorrow to figure out who our inaugural uh, Vixens Cap Tag Team Champions will be. So Daphne did a really good job of having, keeping the pressure off of Megan, her first time out. Uh, Daphne did her job. But Daphne got help from High Point. You know, High Point not yeah. making spares. You know, they, they made it easy for, for the Savages that it's unfortunate that they just couldn't spare enough. Congratulations to the Savages again. They are moving on to tomorrow. The Rollers, they open there in the eighth. Let's see what Sheena does here. Ooh, okay, five pin. Five pins are getting to be something. All right, she got it though. All right, so C Swag, um, Roxy's gonna come back in. She's going to have to bowl the uh, ninth. Let's see what Marlana can do here. If you put any kind of pressure. All right, strike. All right, cool, cool. Still max score 215, so yeah. not over yet. Yeah, I'm sure they would feel better if Sheena was the one up in this position. Sheena's been the one that struggled in these late, late game uh, situations. Roxy's been solid. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd be surprised if Roxy didn't throw 10 back right here. Oh. Okay. Okay. Still. Yeah. Still an outside chance here yeah. for the rollers. Yeah. All she just got it. Just. <laughs> just got to spare it up here. Alright, so Sheena's gonna throw Sheena's gonna start the tent. But remember Roxy has to throw the last ball. Mark here will do it. Okay, two eight, not the easiest spare in the world. Rollers have to strike here. Stay alive. Okay. There's one. Yep. Roxy going to come in, try to put this match away with a conversion. Spare and three pins would lock it up. Okay, there's the spare. All right. Yeah, like you said, just got to keep this on the lane pretty much. Three count, do it. 
or it could could be over too, depending on uh, how rollers finish as well. Roxy kept it on the lane. Okay. That'll do it. That'll do it. So tomorrow we have Spartanburg Savages and Carolina Swag bowling for the Vixens Cap Tag Team Champions. Should be a, a great match along with the other uh, North, versus, North versus South matches we have going on. We've got the world title match going on tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of fun, man. I look forward to doing this all game yeah. tomorrow too. Yeah, this is this is gonna be great. We got uh, an unholy alliance squad starting at 9 a.m. We'll cover that here on Bowl TV. We've got uh, franchise 4:30 cap doubles mm -hmm. tomorrow, and then uh, a bunch of really big matches oh, in yeah. the afternoon and evening. Yep, gonna be a lot of fun. Gonna be a lot of fun. Look forward to it. Uh, doing it all game with you tomorrow. All right, Ray. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me tonight. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate we'll see you back here tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, folks. That's going to do it for our coverage here on Bowl TV from UBA Mega Bowl. Hope you enjoyed it. We've got a lot more action coming up for you tomorrow. As I mentioned, we get started at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we've got a couple of different squads to cover. The Unholy Alliance squad number three from uh, Bolero West End. That'll be first. 9 a.m. Franchise 4:30 cap doubles. 2 p.m. Eastern, and then we've got a bunch of World Championship Series title matches starting at 5 p.m. And then the World Title Championship match coming up at 7 p.m. tomorrow. So that's going to do it for us. I'd like to thank uh, everybody out there for watching. I'd like to thank the UBA for uh, allowing us to cover their events here on Bull TV. We really enjoy uh, all of the. All the excitement, as you can hear, going on right now. Uh, but uh, we will be back with more coverage here on Bowl TV tomorrow. Of UBA Mega Bowl, I'm Jason Thomas. And uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow on Bowl TV, where bowling lives here. Good night, everybody. <laughs>